First of all, good morning, everyone. I'm awfully sorry not to be with you because I'm, I'm in love with your country, with your food, with your culture, with your language. And uh, I dream when I retired, when I stopped playing with all those digital tools, I dream of retiring uh, on a Greek island someday. So I'm really awfully sorry not to be with you, but thank you so much for welcoming me uh, on a purely digital way. So I'm gonna share my presentation with you. And uh, the title of the presentation was about a platform, a MOOC and a platform. And uh, I would like to propose you something a bit different because uh, I'm told that I'm uh, with an audience of pedagogical people. So I can, I can talk about smarter thing with you than with uh, the average listeners. So I will propose to you to, to have a presentation in two parts. First, a bit of theory, I hope not too boring. And after that, uh, I will introduce the platform and what we, we have done together. Uh, first of all, I would like to, to ask, are you familiar with the universe of uh, Douglas and the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? If you are familiar with that, those books or those movies or those television series, you probably know the, the famous question, what, if, what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And then those people build a computer to answer that question. And after seven billion years of work, they get the answer. And the answer is 42. Now, of course, those people are shocked. They say, what? The, the answer to the universe, the life, and everything is 42? Yeah, and they got that poor answer because the question was poorly formulated. And unfortunately, in a lot of digital projects, the first question is, what kind of tool are we going to use? It's not a poorly uh, formulated question, but it's a question that comes too early. And if it's the first question you ask before you start a digital project, chances are you will, you will fail. So first, before asking those questions, you should uh, focus on your learners. That's the, the thing. What is the learner's problem, the user? And since the user will be a learner, you need a pedagogy. That's the first thing you need. So the first thing you have to focus on is how to answer what kind of pedagogy can I use to uh, match the user's problems. And then there is the digital culture. And when I talk of digital culture, I don't speak about being able to code, being able to, to write a program. I'm talking about being able to understand the implication of digital tools on the learners. How is it to learn with a tool? How, what impact will have those tools to the learners? What are the limits of those, those tools? Uh, will those tools format the learners in a way that I don't wish? And to make sure the pedagogy and the digital culture match, you have to train the trainers. The trainers have to know the tools, but they also need to understand what impact those tools will have on the learners. And then there is the intersection between pedagogy and the digital tools. If you want your tools to be adapted, you have to also use an adapted pedagogical model and an adapted digital model. If the three circles are not in harmony, your project will fail somewhere. So let's see now what, is, what it is about. So it's a MOOC. It's a, a very ugly word. It's like a, a mouth crying MOOC. Actually, fortunately enough, the reality be, behind the word is a bit more, more beautiful, more interesting. So MOOC is there for Massive Open Online Course. Massive means that a lot of people can enter. And uh, so far we have something like 17,000 subscribers for this MOOC, which is pretty massive. It's open, meaning everybody can enter. The door is fully open. Uh, whoever you are, whatever your age condition, your degrees, you're welcome. And online course, and that's also uh, something we are going to talk about. And this MOOC is about specific learning disabilities. So we talk about dyslexia, dyspraxia, dysorthographia, dyscalculia, dyspegia, and I'm probably forgetting some uh, others of those uh, specific learning disabilities. So 
So the main goals of this MOOC, this, I think we have, we had three main goals. First of all, offer reliable information because we found out that there was a lot of confusion about those troubles and also a lot of misunderstanding and also a lot of crooks uh, taking advantage of the ignorance of the families or the schools to, to sell products or services that were not really adapted to the, the needs of those persons. We also want to show that we can learn differently, not uh, just in an academic model, but people can learn from each other. And that's the third main goal, and maybe the, the real main goal is to build a common knowledge about those, this trouble. My conviction, my philosophy of learning is that everyone has a part of the knowledge, everyone is a part of the competence. I can see that the parents have a part of this, those, that, that knowledge. Uh, the professionals, the teachers, uh, orthophonists, uh, speech therapists, and so on, they have a part of that knowledge. But if they put that knowledge together and start sharing it, they will be much stronger and they will have a, a common knowledge which is much more efficient. And uh, so far I have to say I'm very happy because uh, the MOOC started about two weeks ago. And I have to say the, the learners are showing that they understand those principles much beyond my, my expectations. So I'm a very happy guy right now. So we use the methodology for, to, to create that MOOC. And uh, that methodology is what is called the design thinking. So it's uh, a methodology which is used in design. And design is not just make beautiful objects to put in magazines on a coffee table. Design is about how to design, how to conceive services and products that will really match the user's need. And in training, is, uh, the, the goal is how to find the best way to train those people so they can overcome their, the obstacles in their life and they can overcome the, the gap there is between their knowledge and the knowledge they need to overcome those obstacles. I'm not sure I'm very clear. So the first step is the hypothesis. Uh, there is this uh, philosopher Seneca who said, the traveler who doesn't know where he, where he goes always gets lost. And I think that's the first thing we, we wanted to know. We wanted to do is to define a frame. So the frame was parents and teachers alike needs more reliable information. They are confused. Uh, they are isolated. They feel a lot of pain, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. So we should give them reliable information and a space to vent those frustration. And to make sure we were right, we, we made two surveys, one for the parents, one for the professionals. We, make, we made also some research. Uh, each partner, since we are six partners, I will talk about that a bit later, we are six partners. And all the partners made research in their, in their own countries and we put that together. The next step is ideation, trying to find the best solutions for the problem. So trying to find the best way to train those people to help them overcome their problems. Then the next step is prototyping. You create your course and then you test it. I have to say we didn't have time. We, we were running out of time, so we didn't really test. So the test is um, made with the real learners, which is not that easy. And that means sometimes you have to adapt to the learner's need uh, while the course is on. And delivery to the learners, of course, we, we delivered since the course began two weeks ago. But I would like to focus on two, two of those steps which were very important. Empathy. Empathy is generally the step that is overlooked by most projects leader. And it's a very big mistake. Because if, we, if, you lose, if you miss that step, you will not understand your learners fully and you will not offer them something very useful to them. And I have to say I'm very happy with the way the team, the international team dealt with that, uh, with that step. And everybody, everyone came with very, very interesting pieces of information about those uh, learners need. I will cover that with you. And we used uh, a technique which is called the empathy map. It's been created by uh, a consultant, an American consultant called David Gray. And uh, we didn't use this model, but we adapted this model to our needs and we adapted it through um, 
uh, mind maps. You can see a part of uh, a mind map here because we didn't want to understand our learners only on the cognitive point of view, but we wanted to know what are their emotions, what are their feelings about what they live, about what are their feelings about an online course. And uh, we learned a lot of stuff and uh, we learned that yes, we were right, parents are confused, parents are angry, they're in, uh, in pain, but much more than we expected. And we also found out some very interesting stuff like uh, uh, legal problems in Italy, for instance. Uh, we found out that uh, dyspraxia and uh, dysgraphia are not recognized in Italy and not recognized in Belgium, while they are recognized in France. We found out a lot of very interesting stuff that allowed us to build uh, a very relevant course, I think. And uh, we found out we have actually three categories of learners and not two like we, we thought at the beginning. We found out we have parents, we expected that category, and we, we found out that they have very high expectations. They have, so the big heart is for very big emotional involvement. There is a lot of emotions in, uh, in this course. They have uh, a very, very high intellectual expectations. They, they, want, they want reliable and structured information and not a bunch of information uh, so-and-so spread on, on the internet. And the flag is for sharing. We, we found out they had a, a very big desire to share, to give tips and to get tips from each other. So they are really eager to build that common knowledge I was talking about before. The same with professionals. Professionals are uh, teachers, speech therapists, psychologists, and so on. And those people like those children. And we found out that they are much more emotionally involved than we expected, like the parents, actually. And uh, they are also suffering and they are also saying, we want to offer something good to those kids, to offer a, a future to those kids, but we, we don't know how, we don't have the tools, we don't have the methodology, please help us. And then you have the curious people. People who say, oh, I've learned about this lecture and there is a MOOC about that, I'm gonna go and see what's, what's in it. So their emotional uh, expectation is pretty low so is their need and their desire to share, but their intellectual expectations are, and cognitive expectations are quite high. So we have three different categories of learners, but two of them are very highly emotionally involved and have a very big desire to share. So uh, in, in order to answer to those needs, we uh, went to the ideation part. So what are the best solutions for those people? And we came out with five, five dimensions. First dimension, reliable information. There is a lot of information on the internet. The, the problem is the quality is very uh, variable. You have very interesting scientifically validated information and you have rumors, fake news, stupid things that uh, are very confusing for the parents. We wanted to offer them multimedia resources. Why? Because we are not dealing with academics. We are dealing with mothers. We are dealing with teachers. We are dealing with people who are maybe not trained to, to deal with academic contents. We also wanted to give them means of self-expression because we, we recognize that through the survey that they have a lot of positive and negative emotion to let out. So we needed a solution that let them express those feelings, those emotions, that will to, to give a nice future to their children. And also sharing devices because, okay, to express yourself is, uh, is already good, but if you can share tips and documents with uh, other people, it's even better. And then the fifth thing I really wanted to offer them is a presence. What is presence? Uh, it's a concept that's been uh, actually uh, settled by Garrison and Arbold in one of their books in 2007. And if you have to remember one thing of this presentation, please remember this. Digital learning is in a very cold world. You have this presentation is just a bunch of pixels and it's a very cold world, emotionless, cold, frozen world. 
If you don't put human presence in your course, people will run away. They are always one click away from the exit. So if they feel there's nobody there, they will get out pretty soon. And I wanted, I know that those people wanted uh, to be in a in very warm frame, in a very uh, kindly, uh, kind climate. So here, I, this, um, this graphic about uh, presence is very important to me. To, to get a very positive educational experience. So there is the social presence. So people have to feel that they are not alone. They have other people who are in the same situation, the other learners, their peers, but they understand that there are also teachers or, or uh, trainers that are there to help them with the, the technical problems, but also to, um, to have a supportive discourse. And this is uh, the intersection between the social and cognitive. Uh, cognitive meaning you give them the answers they, they need at one point. And there is also the teaching presence, meaning like in the classroom, you ask a question, you have to need to get an answer at one point. Maybe, <coughs> sorry, maybe not immediately because uh, maybe they are on, online at 1, in, 1 a.m. and you sleep and when you wake up the morning after, you can answer. But at least they have to get an answer. Even the way you select content you will put into the the course is important. The climate you will set is very important. And uh, we try to, to set a very friendly and uh, very funny uh, climate at some times to, to make sure they don't get bored or they, they don't feel isolated on the, that thing. And uh, for that we had a, a tool and uh, now I will uh, leave you alone for a couple of minutes with the theory and let's go to the, the tools we are using for this kind of thing. And the tool we are using is actually a platform called the Course Networking. It's been developed by the, Purdue, the University of Purdue in Indianapolis in the United States. And uh, I have to, <laughs> to thank once, once again, Mr. Ali Jafari, the founder of the, the Cyber Lab of the university and also the founder of the Course Networking because they offered us the platform for free for one year, we have a contract with them. We can use the platform for one year, up to 100,000 uh, learners. So that was a fantastic present for the Purdue, from the, uh, the Purdue University. So this platform is very different from most e-learning platform because most e-learning platform are actually what we call an LMS, learning management system, meaning a system that manages courses and users. Here we are in a very different learning environment and it's actually a, a kind of social network, a bit like Facebook, but it's a learning social network. So people can write a post, they can make a poll, they can uh, plan uh, events and uh, believe me, they do. On the left side here, you have all the courses and you see MOOCDIS. MOOCDIS is actually like a bubble on the internet so people enter the bubble, they are in a protected environment, and in this bubble they will find uh, 18 different courses, six languages, because we are six partners, so Belgians, French, Greek, Portuguese, Italians, and Romanian uh, partners. So you have a course in each language plus English, since English was our working language. And in each language, you have three courses. A first module of four weeks, starting at uh, week zero, up to week three. So why week zero? I will, I will show you now. Week zero was actually because we deal, like I said, we deal with mothers, we deal with uh, teachers who are, most of them never had a, an online course in their life. They don't know how it works. And here, moreover, we have a platform which is a bit special with the social network which is integrated. So the first week, work zero, week zero, was there to show them how to cope with the learning environment. Here I'm gonna show you the French version, that's the one I'm uh, taking care of, but I'm gonna show you some very interesting devices for you to understand what's going on. So here you have the course, and the course is divided in several, I'm not on the right one, it's, it's I'm sorry, but each time I want to make a demonstration, I'm sure to go the, the wrong the wrong part. Okay, this, this is the right one. 
So in this MOOC, in this one, you see several weeks, week zero, week one, week two is hidden. I can see it week two and week three and week four, but the, uh, the learners can't see it right now. And for each week, you have different uh, tabs here. So here I'm in week zero, I've, I'm uh, learning, I'm discovering my learning environment. And if I go down, I will have several multimedia devices, uh, an, in, an interactive infographic here. Here I have a presentation, what are you going to do this week? Under that I have a video explaining the principle of the MOOC. Here I have a mind map, an uh, animated mind map that I can navigate with the arrows here and I can see what is the, the principle of the MOOC, what I just said before about uh, the, the three principles of the MOOC. Here how to write uh, a post and here discussion and we ask them what do you think about the principle of this MOOC and so on and they have to share and you see that here uh, 1276 people already uh, answered the, the question and if I click on it I will get a, a new window and here I can write, I can answer the question and if I answer the question I will get 15 points just to discuss, just to talk with other, peoples, other people. Here you see that uh, yeah, they have uh, written a lot of uh, post and comment and you see here that there are points and actually our system is gamified meaning each time somebody participate to the course each time you make an activity you get points and those points are a part of your evaluation so each time you answer a quiz each time you participate to a discussion you get the points but each time you write a comment you write a post you make a, an event or you make a poll you also gather points so meaning it's the combination of your answers to the quiz and the points you have gathered through the activities that will make your certification at the end of the MOOC. So here I show you something in French uh, and if I'd want to know what they, they write here, uh, the best thing is to click on this link because this is a translation link. So if I click here, here I have the Greek translation of my French, of the French uh, post that woman wrote. And when I read her post, I can answer in French and with the trans, I can answer in Greek, sorry, and with the translation tool, she can uh, have the translation in uh, French of what I answered in Greek. And uh, I expected people to, to communicate uh, with each other since uh, those I told you we have uh, six different languages in this MOOC and uh, people can, uh, people who subscribe to the Greek MOOC can communicate with the learners from the, the French MOOC and the French can communicate with the English ones and so on. So everybody can communicate with everybody, whatever the language is, uh, whatever the course is. So uh, as long as you are in this MOOC, this bubble, you can communicate with everybody. The last part I want to show you is the portfolio. So not only people can share and so on, but the portfolio here is like a, a LinkedIn page. It's actually an electronic portfolio that they can keep even after the course. And on this portfolio, they can show their, um, yeah, they can show who they are, but here they can show their points of interest to their skills, experience and competencies and so on. Here there is a further description of YM, for instance. Here, badges, and uh, I will show you another. Here is the portfolio of one of the learners, Claudine Roda, a French learner. And you can see that she has 3,411 points, and that give her the level diamond. She's on a, it's like a video game. The more points you accumulate, the more level you, you go. And finally, she's in the diamond level. She, it's the highest level of the, the course. Here she got two badges. She got a badge of the, the best uh, post of the week. And here she got the outstanding award because she is the one, the first one in uh, all participants to get the diamond level. And here are documents that she put on her portfolio and that she gives to others. Other people can uh, download those documents and integrate them to their own portfolio. 
here's recommend recommendations and compliments she get from she got from other learners. I have to say the learners in this book are really kind with each other and with the, the with the trainers as well. And here on that last part, you can see the people you are uh, linked to on the the social network. And at the end of the, the, sixth, the, the sixth week of the, the MOOC, all those points here and all the answers to the, the quiz and so on will make a certification. And we'll deliver automated certification that will be actually officially delivered by the University of Pitești in Romania, which is our uh, Romanian partner. So thank you so much for your, your attention. I hope I, I've been clear enough for you and I'm not sure because I'm, I'm in that stuff the, the <laughs> seven days and 24 hours, 24 seven. So I hope I, I've been clear enough for you and you can take something away from this presentation. Okay, Marco, thanks a lot for being here with us, even from distance. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, take a break, uh, we'll be finish about uh, two o'clock and if there are any questions I will write you a short message, okay? Okay, uh, one more thing, this uh, session is recorded and uh, I will make a, a video on YouTube if you want and I will give you the link so you can do whatever you please with it at the end of the... Excellent, okay. we can uh, share it among all participants. Exactly. Excellent, thank you very, very much. No, thanks to you, really. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.